All right, kids, I'm gonna build a river table. Well, we got these big walnut slabs here that we gotta flatten out. And we set up this jig to do so. I got a new GoPro. So we're gonna try it out. I broke one of the lenses on my phone over here. And I thought, man, as much stupid crap as I'm doing, I need to hedge my bets. GoPro doesn't really have a lot of the zoom features and stuff that I'd like to have, but we're gonna try it out. Try this two camera thing. I'm gonna shoot most of this with a GoPro, I think. So anyway, I've already flattened one side of this and I'll show you how I pulled that off. We're gonna flatten another side on the second piece and then we'll lay them both in there with the flattened sides down and flatten the rear or the, the bottom side so that they're both you know, roughly the same thickness. We don't want to do these separately, which was my first plan, and then it struck me I'm going to end up with two different thicknesses. So we'll do one side on each, then put them both in the jig and flatten them simultaneously, hopefully, and then we'll get, you know, similar thickness to some degree. Um, so let me show you what we got here jig-wise. So I've got some three quarter inch MDF, cut the sides down and use those to make these uprights. Just got some scrap three quarter inch melamine for the sled itself. So I've got these little risers with some tuck tape so this can slide back and forth on the jig like that. Now what we're doing is throwing this big Triton with a two inch spoil board bit on there into the sled. So I use some hole saws on each end to cut about a two and a half inch hole, drew some lines and then just cut that out the rest of the way. And we can slide our router back and forth as we move the sled up and down. And that helps us flatten it. Let me turn this over and I'll show you the flattened side so far. So this didn't get perfectly flat because there were some really low spots, but that's okay. We can work that out later. I really just wanted to get this flat enough or as flat as we could so that it will lay flat without wobbling. And when you're doing it this way, you're going to have these lines. They're unavoidable as far as I'm aware, but you can sand those out pretty easily. So that's one side of one slab. We've got a second one to do, but I'll show you, although this isn't perfect, once we turn it over, it lays really flat. And there's basically no wobble in it at all. So that'll allow us to get, to keep this flat on the jig, run the bit over it, and we will end up with what is a mostly parallel slab. So we're gonna move this one out of the way and we'll set up and run the second one through. Now, I'm not cutting these to length just yet. At least not before I flatten them. So the way I handled this on the other one was Got our clamps on either end to hold it still. And that leaves us with a section that doesn't get flattened, which is fine because these are longer than what I would need. If you intend to use the whole slab, you're probably gonna have to figure out a way to secure it from the sides or the bottom so it's out of the way of your sled and you can flatten the whole thing. So, it's going to kind of inspect this. In my opinion, I think the best way to handle this is to have your cup facing upward. We can apply pressure to the ends with the clamps, use our shims to get this level. We'll go over that process with you here in just a second. Where were we? So we're going to try to get this an equal distance from the ends here. 
I don't think that's totally necessary, but it's just uh, going to appease my OCD habits. Close enough. So what we got now is this little system I've arranged for clamping this. Tighten this down, we've got our hold down clamps. It's probably gonna need to adjust it out a little bit. Bring this in. It's not bad. Go down to the other side, clamp down what appears to be the highest spot here. And then we'll throw a level on it, see what we come up with. So that end needs to come way up. That end needs to come up, so. Let's work this one out a little bit more. Actually, no. Let's lock this back down, put this four foot level on there. I mean, eyeballing it, that looks pretty good there, lengthwise. <clears throat> now that's real close. I didn't need to come up a little bit, but not too much. So we're gonna put a few shims in here, try to bring that end up. So I'm not really gonna put a lot on this. I'm just gonna jam these under here so that when I clamp it, it doesn't push it down any further than is necessary. So we'll do this. Not bad. I think that's going to get us where we need to be, kids. All right, so we're looking at the side of the sled here. I'm just going to show you real quick how this is going to work or should work. So you can see our bit coming in here. We need to drop that down and get it level with this, and then we'll probably bring it down another eighth or quarter of an inch. Um, we got some pretty big cups in this. <clears throat> Hopefully we've got enough feed left. Yep, so we're It's probably an eighth. We're gonna stick with that. We're probably between an eighth and a quarter in depth there. And it's likely not going to get all of it at once. We can make a second pass. And again, on these, we don't really need to get perfectly level right off the bat. 
This is very likely going to take multiple passes. So we'll just get it as good as we can and get it to set flat. And then we'll tip both of these over, surface the other sides. So the plan is whether this actually makes any real sense or not, is to get the best we can initially with one side on each board. Then we'll put them both up there, surface the opposite side, flip it back over, and clean up any other spots we may have missed. And that will keep them a consistent thickness so that when we go to pour this, everything comes out good, hopefully. It's about to get real loud in here, kids. So we're still missing <clears throat> a pretty good section. You can see this whole area down here hasn't really been surfaced. So we're gonna drop her down again and make another pass until we get it right. Well, this is great. This little door on these Triton routers over the power button is the dumbest design I've ever seen. It causes nothing but problems. That's cutting a lot off. It's only gonna leave us with an inch and a half. Huh. I think maybe we'll call it there. By the time we get our depth good enough to finish both sides all the way down, we're cutting our total thickness down to about an inch and a half. 
and I really don't like that. So I'm going to leave it where we got it. We'll cut these ends off and see, you know, does this lay flat enough? We'll go from there. All right, so even though we didn't get that whole thing surfaced, it's still pretty stable. I mean, it's not rocking back and forth hardly at all. A few little air gaps on the bottom, but it's sitting mostly flat. It rocks a little bit here, but I don't think that's gonna to be too big of a problem. So the next step is to surface these together. Uh, so we'll lay them in there side by side with the finished surfaces facing down against the bottom of the jig. All right. We may have a problem here. I don't know if they'll fit. Uh-oh, kids. Eh, close enough. So now we got to figure out how we're going to clamp these, keep them from moving. So we don't necessarily need a lot of downward force on this because they're both sitting pretty flat, but we need to keep them from moving this way as we work the router along it. So I think we can just screw some boards in there. Now this one's going to take several passes. We got we got some significant variances in the thickness on these, so we're going to have to do a whole lot of routing with this one. Got our surfaces cut down with the sled and then sanded these to just the 120 right now. Um, this is how the table is generally going to look, I think. We do have a big low spot down here, but I think I'm going to be able to cut off most of that because this is only going to be about five feet long. So the sanding was, it was kind of a pain. These lines that were left from the router bit. Um, I ended up using a 40 grit on it at first. You gotta be careful and you don't wanna spot sand those lines because you'll just end up with waves and grooves in this anyway. 
So you just want to work it back and forth in smooth motions to keep it as even as you can. Then I got rid of, of most of it. You can just barely feel a few spots, but you can't really see them. <clears throat> so the next step, we're going to take our straight edge, our bore bar, put it on here and zip off this edge here and preserve as much as we can, but we want to get a good straight edge across here and on that side so the outsides of the table are square. And then we'll square up a line down here just to trim and get this good and square, draw our measurements down this way and cut this big low spot off. I think that end is okay and we'll cut our excess off on this end for this slab to maybe get rid of some of that crack. Then we gotta clean up these edges, get the loose debris off of there, and maybe we can pour. Um, I couldn't find melamine, not within 30 miles of me. An eight foot sheet of melamine would be ideal because we could cut it down. It's gonna be, you know, pretty well non-stick, but we'll cut this down to the size we need to make our mold and just cover everything in tuck tape. Um, and that should be pretty well non-stick and come out pretty easy. So yeah, let's cut this edge off. Got these cut down to shape. This is roughly how it's going to look, except obviously we're gonna have epoxy in the middle of that. So about 36 inches wide and five feet long. We gotta set up a mold here and uh, do a few other things to get this ready to pour. Uh, I took some 120 grit, use the chisel pick to knock off any kind of loose debris. Um, punky wood there, cleaned out some of these cracks and knots, and, uh, and we'll fill those in probably with a little bit of the epoxy we mix up for the middle. And then we're gonna kind of brush the edges with some epoxy to seal those before we do the actual pour. That'll reduce how much we lose through the grain of the wood. And we may dribble some epoxy in these little knot holes here. I think that'll be kind of cool. We'll see. But uh, let's build this mold. We're just using the same piece of MDF that we use for the slab jig. We're just going to cut it down to the dimensions that we need.
Okay, we got these cut down. Let's wrap these up. So this is just sheathing tape, tuck tape. Lowe's brand. There are any number of brands of these out there. All we're, all we're doing here is just making these non-stick, hopefully. So our resin doesn't stick to the frame it's to the mold. That would be a major problem. All right, you get the idea. We're gonna cover this all up. We'll put these pieces you know, on each side, some caulking underneath to make sure we don't have any leakage out of it. You get the idea. All right, we got it partially assembled here with my brother Jake. And uh, I got the tuck tape in there. I really hate that this looks like a Lowe's advertisement. This is ridiculous. Lowe's Home Improvement. It's the best choice when it's your only choice. So we're going to run some caulking through the corners here and make sure that nothing leaks out. So I was kind of having a dilemma about how I'm going to caulk the ends and not have a line of caulk in my um, casting. So we left one end off and we're going to basically push the slabs in there and then caulk the end of the slab before we put the last piece down or the last uh, end piece on the mold and hopefully that'll keep any visible caulk lines out of the edge of the table where the casting will be so we'll caulk these corners and then we'll bring you back when we start putting the slabs in there all right so we're going to slide these slabs in there Here. All right, that looks good. Now, this short end is going to go in there. Let's talk up that edge and let's see. I don't think there are really a lot of spots underneath here that need it. I filled most of these gaps and cracks with some CA glue. I put a little caulk right in there on the bottom, keep it from seeping out there. And then we'll put some on this end and slide her in there.
Okay, that's about it. I'm gonna pre drill this, put some screws in from the bottom and sides, and that's about it for that operation. So we'll paint these edges here, like we said earlier, with a little bit of clear epoxy to let that dry before we do the actual pour. So we got less soaking into the wood and then creating bubbles. But that's about it till we get the rest of the resin. We'll do the pour then.